Hi everyone, trust you all are doing well. So we finished up our store method, created a new subscription of the authenticated user, and we've seen that their details were in the database, that is subscription, and we've seen that the subscription is on Stripe. Right, now what I want to do in this case, I want to update the customer's billing details with the details that the customer basically updated right here. Okay, so in the future, if they change their email or phone or whatever the case, you all the other details that you want to be updated, it automatically does it for you in Stripe as well. Okay, so let's get started. So let's open up our user model. So models, user model. So you have a different model for your biller, billable. Okay, just go to that model. All right, so what I want to do, if you can see this, these fields were filled in basically from the previous one. In order to update this, we need to have the mess assignment right here, the line one, line two, city, and all that kind of stuff. Now, these details right here, it could have been anything you want. You could have named them street address one, street address two, city, state, whatever the case may be, whatever you feel comfortable with. Okay. And you can obviously update them here accordingly. Now, the next thing is uh, for anyone that might be new, I just want to show you where this is coming from. So let's quickly go to the Stripe documentation and I'll show you. All right, I will obviously link, leave a link for you in the description. If you go to the address right there, you will see we have a line one, line two, city, state, postal code in the country. Now, the thing is, Stripe used this for the billing details. Okay, now I want to just mention this. This is very important when you sync the data with Stripe that you name them the same fields. You can name them whatever you want in the database, but when you sync them with Stripe, it have to be this fields right here. But we're gonna to get to that, so no need to worry about that, okay? So I just wanted to show you where that is coming from. All right, so the next thing that I want to do, I want to create methods that returns these properties inside right here. So you don't have to do that. You can just return the property. But for me, I'm just going to create methods for them. So uh, like this, let me just, for someone that might be new, let me just show you. The first one, uh, it's, we're going to call this one line one. Okay, and I'm, this is going to be a string. And then I'm just going to return the public property, this the property line one, like this. Right, I'm going to do that for the rest. Right, so this right here is basically returning that property in our database. Okay, so let me just do all of them and I'll see you after this. All right, so now I've got my line one, line two, city, state, country, and postal code. Right, now the thing about this is if you name your something else, street address one, you can do that and just return the relevant properties. Okay. So this must obviously correspond with your database. So let me just open my customers. This one right here. If you guys, in the previous episodes, what we have done, we added those details right there. Okay, so this fields must obviously correspond to this properties. Okay, just want to get that out of the way. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to create this booted method right here. So I just copied and pasted this in. So this comes from Laravel Cache Stripe. I will show you in a second where this is coming from. So let's go there. All right, so if we go to Laravel Cache Stripe, you will see that under customers, you will see sync customer data with Stripe. So let's quickly click on that. Copy this part at the top and this protected static method now this was created by uh, one of the developers at stripe so obviously pardon me at laravel where they actually created this i think greece actually created the method to easily sync this so whenever the booted method in our let's just copy this and i'll explain it quickly all right so then you just obviously paste it in here so now this will what will happen is this is in our booted model of our user model all right so whenever an updated event is basically firing off in our model so in this case the user model if you have a custom model it will be the customer model all right so that will fire an updated uh, basically event off in your so if i could hover over it you will see it will basically dispatch the register an updated model event with the dispatcher 
okay so that's basically what will happen okay then it will fire off a queueable and it will queue this method right here so in this case it will sync customer details now i will go quickly to this method right there to show you what this do actually does in a second but it will fire off this event whenever in this case a user's details are updated like the email the phone the address or whatever the case may be okay so let's quickly go to our billable at the top right here so let's go to our billable then you will go to your manage customers right if we go a little bit down you will see we got update customer right here just remember that okay that fire off now if we go down a little bit more you will see sync stripe customer details all right now that will fire off the update stripe customer method the one i just shown you right there and it will update the name if the name have changed if they update the email and it will update the phone and it will update this address okay the street address right there all right now that's quite handy now let's just copy the stripe address right there okay don't change anything inside your uh, actual the vendor folder so in this case is laravel cashier that vendor folder please don't touch it okay don't change anything in here just copy the method and go to your user model let's go at the bottom right there okay so we don't have to actually worry about the phone and all that kind of stuff because those details we correspond with our details so we don't need to change that but you can update anything accordingly all right so let's just uncomment them right here now, as you can see, they actually have the ones that we actually referred to when we actually created the database entries in our database. As you can see, the line one, line two, city and the state. Now, in here, and those details are now very important that they are the same. Let me just move this around so that it's okay, like that. So this field right here needs to correspond with Stripe because this is the details that need to be, be basically updated with Stripe. Okay, so now let's quickly change this to be coming from basically our methods that we created, our line country and all that kind of stuff. Let this be actually corresponding to those methods. All right, so the line one, that will be the same as this line one. Okay, and I'm going to do the rest the same okay all right so now we've got a line one line two city state and all the kind of details as soon as they updated this immense event will fire off it will sync the customers type details and it will update them right here now i just want to mention this again right please don't update it in the documentation in the basically the vendor folder okay don't update anything in there okay because tomorrow let's say uh, Kesha brings out a new version it will basically clear and override all of this right here okay so you will lose whatever you've done so just copy that into your user model and you're all good to go right so if you want the phone or anything else to be something else you just copy that method all right and just actually update them what you want it to be in the, your user model all right, enough of that. The next thing that we want to do is we need to basically run this queuable right here. Okay, so we need to be able to actually queue jobs. In order to set that up, we need to open up our terminal. So let's quickly set up our queues. All right, if you have the template, you will already have the queuable table. But for us, I just wanted to show if someone doesn't have that. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is PHP artisan q uh, table you run this command so what will happen now is it will actually create a queue table now as you can see the create jobs table already exists i just wanted to show you so please don't think of i made a mistake no i'm just showing it to you but as you can see i already got my jobs table right there so let me just close the terminal let me let's go there quickly so you will actually create a, a migration for you Let's go there, create, let's go to jobs. You will see we got a jobs migration right here. All right, so this is responsible for actually uh, creating the subscription in the background with a queuable. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to go to our environment file. 
button, this one right here, and you will see there's a queue connection right there. Just set this queue connection to database, like this database, like that. All right. So now we've got our queue connections all set up. All right. The next thing that we want to do, I mean, just quickly recap. So if you created the migrations, you will get in your database right there. The next thing that you're going to do is just set up your environment file right here to queue database. And after you've done that, PHP Artisan Migrate. This one right here, PHP Artisan Migrate. Now in my case, I have nothing. All right. And after that, what we want to do is we want to do PHP Artisan queue work like this. Right, so now the, what this will do, it, it will run now the queue worker. Let me just open up another terminal so I don't have to interrupt this one. All right, so that's all set up. So we've got our queue worker in the running in the background. Now what we would do is now let's quickly create a new subscription. Now, as you can see, we've got our checkout right here. I want these fields basically now to be filled in from the database. All right, there's a, just a couple of things I want to add and change in here. So I want this details. If it's old data, it needs to show old data. If the customer's details are already there, it needs to be filled in from the database. Right, I'm quickly gonna set this up. Another thing that I want to do, I want to change this name, this name. I want, still want to remain this one right there, but I want to add under the payment information, I want to add basically the customer's card uh, name right here. Now the reason for that is, Normally, if a person, let's say they register on your blog right here. Okay, the name that I might register with might not be the same as the name that they have on their card. Now, that is very important. Okay, so I just want to add that field in there. Okay, so let's do that quickly in our checkout view. All right, so let's quickly go there under resources, uh, views, drive, index. This one right here. Okay, so there's a couple of things that I want to do in here. So let's copy the first one, the name right here. Let's copy that and move it down to the card details right here. And I just want to change it to basically be name on card like this. All right, in the in the name right here, card, just put your card name like this and leave the ID right here like that. Okay, so we don't have to have a name field. And this will be name on card like this. Okay, just put it like that. Now the value right here will be the old card name like this. Just let me just. No, I don't want to pass that actually through. I do complete card. So the name right here, card name like this. Let's go up and remove the ID field right here. So I'm just going to, instead of the card holder name, this is the one that we're going to actually handle with our JavaScript at the bottom. But I just want this name actually to come from this card name right here. Okay. All right. The next thing that I want to do is let's go to the top, start at the top. Now the value right here that we're passing through, I want this to be the auth. You already have them in there. I just wanted to start from the beginning for those that might be. Yeah. So the authenticated user. Okay. So, all right. For those that might be new, wondering why I don't put the blade syntax in there, just remember we're passing the value as a variable to our blade component. Okay. So authenticated user, if that name is available, all right, just show it. If it's not available, use the old name. I'm going to do that the same for the email and the rest. All right, I finished up. So as you can see, we've got our authenticated user, the name. Now we could have tried to turn it operator, but this is actually a quicker way for me. Um, just basically a method in PHP, what we have. So if you have your authenticated name, if it's available, show that. If not, show the old name. Now the thing is, I'm calling on the methods that I created in my user model, the name, the email address and stuff. You can obviously refer to the properties, okay? So if you can see the line one, the one that we just created, line two, just go through all of them like that and just show the value of the authentic city or the old city. All right, authentic like this and the country and the postal code. All right, so just quickly do that. And then when you finish, then we can just 
carry on. All right. So obviously the next thing that I want to do, let's just see if all of this data actually displays on the front end on the form itself. So let's go there. Right, so as you can see, it falls in the data right here. Now, as you can see, the street is like this, and I got some gibberish that's coming from the database like that. Right, so let me just quickly change them. I'm just going to do like unit, uh, city, uh, state, 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 and the country, some country, like this, and the postal code. Straight of, I'm just going to do a couple of ones. Okay. Five ones, let's just do five. The next one, the name on the card, this one will be John Doe as well. So if that is corresponding to that name, it doesn't matter. Right, the card number, if you guys remember from the previous episodes, I've leave left a link for you guys in the description. So for the testing the cards. Okay. So the next thing let's just add 23 and just add ones like this. All right, now if I'm gonna press pay now, it needs to actually basically create a subscription okay it needs to update the user in the database and it needs to send a queue work to actually update the stripe customer details with this information all right so let's press the pay now hopefully no processing errors let's do that pay now okay so the payment is happening okay so I obviously want to give a customer some indication but we're going to get to that part very soon so we can actually give them some feedback that something is happening all right as you can see thank you for subscribing so we get to the dashboard because the whole process worked quite nice all right so as you can see if we go to the stripe dashboard you will see we have a new subscription right here all right so we got our yearly plan auto billing right there so let's go to the customers details and see if we can actually see if the customer's details are updated. As you can see, the billing details are updated right there. All right, the street address, the unit, the city, the state, and the five ones, and the country. Okay, so basically our queue work is running this all very, very, very nice. All right, so the next thing that I want to do is, all right, so if we go to our terminal right here in our Code editor, if we go to the queue work part, you can see the queue worker when the job ran. All right, so as you can see, it's processing and then it processed the jobs. So that's why the details were updated. Quite nice. Let's close the terminal. All right, so that's it. So, what we're going to do in the next one is because a user can create another subscription. Let me just show you. All right, so the user can come up again and actually sign up again with the same plan but what we want to do is we want to give them the option if they already uh, basically subscribe to the plan they can either cancel the plan or update their plan so we're going to work with that in the coming episode all right so if they signed up so that it needs to show them how long and all that kind of stuff the subscription is the last but before i do that i need to um I'm thinking of adding a trial first so that the user can be uh, have a global trial, or let's say 14 days, and after the 14 days, their subscription kicks in. But before they even, uh, so as soon as they create a subscription, so as soon as they sign up as a user, they will have an automatic subscription or trial of 14 days, Then after that, they can fill in their details. I'm thinking which way we're going to work going forward but i think since we already subscribed i just want to be able to let the user cancel their subscription or not subscribe actually with the same plan right there all right anyways that's it for me guys if you like the video please give it a like and if and i'll see you in the next one adios